my gut says, like some crazy amount of uh, solar systems have life, bacterial life somewhere at some point in their history had some bacterial type of life. Something like bacterial, maybe it's totally different kinds of life. Mm -hmm. So th then I'm just facing with the question, it's like, why have we not clearly seen yeah. alien civilizations? And there, the answer, I, I, just, I, I don't find any great filter answer convincing. There's just no way I can imagine an advanced alien civilization not avoiding its own destruction. I can see a lot of them getting into trouble. I can see how we humans are really like 50-50 here. <laughs> well, isn't that kind of appalling? I mean, just take that statement. We've only been around for like, I mean, a couple hundred thousand years tops, <laughs> you know? Um, that is not very long. And we're at a 50-50? I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's indisputable that we have created the means, at least potentially, for our own destruction. Will we learn from our mistakes? Will we uh, avert course and save ourselves? One hopes so, right? But, but even the concept that it's conceivable, whales have not invented a way to kill themselves, <laughs> to wipe out all whales and earth. <laughs> And life on Earth. <laughs> That's one way to see it, but I, I actually see it as a feature, not a bug, when you look at the entirety of the universe. Because uh, it does seem that the mechanism of evolution constantly creates... You want to operate on the verge of destruction, it seems like. I mean, the predator and prey dynamic is really effective at creating at accelerating evolution and development. It seems like us being able to destroy ourselves is a really powerful way to give us a chance to really get our shit together and to flourish, to develop, to innovate, to to uh, go out amongst the stars or 50-50, destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. But like, which I, I think me as a human is a horrible thing, but if there's a lot of other alien civilizations, that's a pretty cool thing. You want to give everybody nuclear weapons. Uh, half of them will figure it out, half of them won't. I mean, the ones you mean that everyone, out, all these civilizations. <laughs> all these civilizations. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that figure it out will figure out some incredible technologies about how to expand, how right. to develop, and all that right. kind of stuff. Right. You could use a kind of evolutionary Darwinian natural selection on that, where in survival isn't just in a harsh, naturally induced climate change, but is because of a nuclear holocaust. And so but and then and then something will will be created that is now impervious to that, that now knows how to survive. Yep, exactly. So why haven't we seen them? Right. Well, because that's a pretty big bar. So if you look at the, just to say, for comparison, dinosaurs, uh -huh. you know, 250 million years. I mean, maybe not very bright. <laughs> um, didn't invent fire. Didn't write sonnets. Yeah. They didn't contemplate the origin of the universe, but they, they lived. Mm -hmm. And um, in a benign situation without confronting their own demise at their own hands. Pause. <laughs> Hooves. Um, so it's just a sheer numbers game. That's a long time, 250 million years. I do think, though, that life can flourish without wanting to manipulate its environment. And that we do see many examples of species on Earth that are very long-lived, very, very long-lived, um, and have very different states of consciousness. They have the jellyfish does not even have a localized brain. Um, I don't think they have a heart or blood. I mean, they're really different from us. Okay, And that's what I think we have to start thinking about when we think about aliens. Those uh, species have lived for a very, very long time. They even show some evidence of immortality. You can wound one badly, and there are certain jellyfish that will go back into a kind of pre-state and start over. So I think we're very attached to imagining creatures like us that manipulate technology. Um, and, um, and I think we have to be way more imaginative uh, if we're going to really take seriously life in the universe. Yeah, they might not prioritize conquest mm -hmm. and expansion. Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. Mm -hmm. They might not be violent. <laughs> like us humans. <laughs> They might be solitary, they might not be social, they might not move in groups, they might not want to leave records. Um, uh, they might, again, not have a localized brain or have a completely different kind of nervous system. I think all we can say about life is it has something to do with moving electrons around. <laughs> and um, 
like neurologically, we move electrons through our nervous system. Our brain has electrical configurations. We metabolize food, and that has to do with uh, getting energy, electrical energy in some sense, out of um, what we're eating. And we have organisms on the earth that can eat rocks. It's quite amazing. Minerals. I mean, talk about extremophiles. They can metabolize things that I would have thought uh, were impossible to metabolize. And so, again, I think we, we have to kind of open our minds to how strange that could be um, and how different from us. And we are the only example, even here on Earth, that, that does manipulate its environment in that extreme way. I mean, can you think of life as, because you said electrons, is, is there some degree of information processing required? So like, it does something interesting, in quotes, with information. I think there are arguments like that. Um, how entropy is changing from the beginning of the universe to today, how life uh, lowers entropy by organizing things, but it costs more as a whole system. So the whole entropy of the whole system goes up. But um, but of course, I, I organized things today and reduced the entropy of certain things in order to get up and get here. <laughs> Um, and even having this conversation, organizing thoughts um, out of the cloud of information, but it comes at the cost of the entire system increasing um, entropy. So I do think there's probably a very interesting way to talk about life in this way. I'm sure somebody has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it creates local pockets of low entropy, and then it, the, the kind of mechanism, the kind of object, the kind of life form mm -hmm. that could do that probably can take you know, arbitrary forms and mm -hmm. you could think now if you could reduce it all to information now you can start to think about physics and in the realm of physics with with the multiverse and all this kind of stuff you could start to think about okay how do i detect those pockets of low entropy mm -hmm. yeah i mean people have tried to make arguments like that like can i look for entropic arguments that might suggest we've done this before <laughs> Uh, the Big Bang has happened before. <laughs> so is it possible that there's some kind of physics explanation why we haven't seen the aliens? Like we said, membranes. I don't think membranes is going to explain why we don't see them in the Milky Way. I think that is just a problem we're stuck with. Whether or not there are extra dimensions or whether or not there's life in another membrane, um, I think we know that even just in our galaxy, which is a very small part of the universe, um, 300 billion stars, something like that. A whole kind of variety of possibilities to be explored by nature in the same way that we're describing. And, and I think you're absolutely right. When, when life was kicked off, first sparked here on Earth, it was voracious. Now, it took a really long time, though, to get to multicellularity. Yeah. I think that's interesting. That's weird. It's weird. It took a really, really long time to become multicellular. But it, it did not take long just to start. 